Oh, hello everyone. Susie from Esoteric Trading Solutions. I hope you're all well. I hope you're looking after yourself, being kind to yourself, being kind to your family and friends, uh, being kind to your putty cats, your animals, and just being kind to people in the world generally to make this a better place. I have to say I am feeling a lot better. I had a really bad throat the last couple of days, but I am feeling a lot better. So um, what I'd like to do today is look at XRP, the world currency, part two. And it's just a carry on from uh, part one, but also the previous YouTube that I did about what would happen uh, if world financial markets collapsed and fiat financial markets collapsed, uh, how would XRP be used in that situation? So it's all sort of combined the last three uh, YouTubes that I sent out. So um, something that came across my desk um, that Isaac said sent to me from uh, his subscriber on my YouTube, thank you very much Isaac, I really appreciate it, it was a really, really good article um, written by this person, I don't know who this person is, but it was an excellent article uh, written in WW Everything FX, The Order of the Phoenix, and it talks about cryptocurrencies and the new market, and this, this article, please uh, read it, it's a fairly long article, but it's an incredibly interesting article. And I found the person that wrote it, I don't know who the person is, seriously, really, really good article. So thank you very much, Isaac, for that article. I really appreciate it. Um, so it it basically talks about the Order of the Phoenix, and it's also a carry-on from the last one that I spoke about, get ready for a world currency. So they're sort of uh, very similar themes, very similar, similar genres. So... Uh, the article talks about a lot of things, but but generally, you know, just as a quick, um, very general summary, it talks about incredible market manipulation uh, in terms of the fiat markets, and, and we certainly see that in the cryptocurrency markets, but certainly in the equity market, we see there's an absolute bias in the equity market to, you know, to buy. Every broker out there is telling you to buy, and every, uh, you know, investment bank is saying buy, you know, lift or, or buy some new... Uh, IPO and then the thing suddenly plummets and you know there is incredible manipulation and it basically talks about the wealthy are getting richer which they are and the poor are getting poorer even the last financial market crisis from 2008-2009 the wealthy have added something like five percent extra five uh, percent extra to their overall income per annum where the poor are just getting poorer and as I said over 4 billion people in the world uh, living in abject poverty out of 7.1. And honestly, it's a crisis of humanity as far as I'm concerned. It's just disgusting and the system doesn't work and they need to, the system needs to be changed from a global perspective when we have so many people that live in abject poverty. It also talks about governments that are inept and that keep printing money no matter what. And basically, uh, you know, complete fiscal fiscal irresponsibility uh, and I tend to agree with that as well. Governments are inept. Uh, we don't see a lot of diversity in government. It's always the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant male at the top that's, you know, more than middle-aged, around 70 or whatever it might be. It talks about the decline in the US dollar. It talks about corruption, whether it be ICO corruption or even IPO corruption. It talks about, you know, the futures market and what we've seen within the cryptocurrency market from BT, you know, from Bitcoin futures. It talks about, you know, even Facebook, you know, banning social media for crypto when, you know, they're, they're absolute hypocrites. And it also talks about uh, Bitcoin in terms of the mining uh, pools, the Chinese mining pools controlling 70% of the hash rate. And obviously Bitcoin's not decentralized because of that because these Chinese mining pools being Antpool, BTC.com, via BTC, FT Pool, and BitTcom uh, can potentially influence the price. And so therefore, Bitcoin, whichever way you like it, is not is not decentralized. And I know there's a guy out there who says it's the best thing since sliced jam, and I won't name his name, but the reality is it's not decentralized in that sense because these, these uh, Chinese mining pools can control to various degrees uh, and then it talks about ripple and xrp and how they will be potentially the world's currency and i i believe that actually myself i have to say i believe that there's an absolute need for it and uh, we'll go through these uh, slides in this presentation and we'll go into that so as i said uh it you know this article talks about massive us dollar debt 
which is out of control. The financial system is fragile, and I, I agree with that as well. I've seen it in 08, 09. The system in my mind is broke, and what happens when the central banks go broke? And this is what happened in 08, 09. The central banks bailed out all the other banks. Uh, it basically bailed out Citigroup, Citibank, whatever you want to call it, when it was down at $2.00. It bailed out a lot of uh, different banks, you know, took on all the equity onto their balance sheet and basically all the, the leaders at the top of these big banks to get paid millions and millions of dollars still had their jobs and still basically got bailed out by the by the federal government and by the central government. And in some degrees, that's an absolute joke where they keep getting paid their money, you know, their risk money potentially. And, uh, you know, the system, you know, it's an absolute monster to what happened in terms of their own banks, uh, you know, basically, you know, selling debt that they shouldn't have been selling and s selling collateralized debt obligations and collateralized legal obligations. But it, what it does talk about is uh, this person says that the U.S. national debt is out of control uh, and there's over 21 trillion, which is true, and it says that six trillion of this debt cannot even be accounted for by the Pentagon, CIA and the U.S. military who all failed to provide legitimate and transparent statistics during their audits. Now, that's a pretty scary thing when a central government can't even find can't even find six trillion of their debt, you know, and where that six trillion went. Uh, where did that six trillion go? And that's a very, very scary thing. Um, the, fra the fragility of the financial system is fragile, and we saw that in 08-09. And I still think it's fragile and nothing's been fixed. Absolutely nothing. Um, he talks about, or she talks about, the global system being broken. It is broken, in my mind, completely broken. Uh, there, there's absolute contagion effect where every market can be uh, affected. As one goes down, the next goes down because cash gets pulled out of one market, gets pulled out of another, gets pulled out of another, and they all go down the same way. Uh, this person talks about the equity market is in a big time bubble and will come down by at least 50% in within the next three years. Now, again, I agree with that. I think the equity market is so overinflated, the Dow particularly, and the S&P, that it's an absolute joke and it's been going up on negative yield curves and it's been going up on inverse yield curves. So in other words, yields have been below zero. They've been negative where the banks have actually given money back to the borrowers and where the rich, the wealthy could borrow at negative yield curves, get their money back in terms of the bank paying them interest, and then they could go and put that money into higher interest rate paying debts. And that's pretty much what they did. They borrowed from Germany uh, under, you know, say negative 0.7 or something, and they put it into high yield bonds at say 8%. And that's why the wealthier became wealthier. And I agree with this. I think the equity markets can fall down quite quickly and quite dramatically. Coupled with that, we're seeing tariff restrictions uh, by Trump, uh, and he wants to do it against the European uh, Union, and he wants to also do it against the Chinese. And literally, with tariff restrictions, it call, it's called protectionism in economics, okay? Protectionism. And basically, with protectionism, you can cause a global recession slash a global depression. Once you start putting up the walls to free trade, you're basically causing a restriction in global growth big time. Okay, and with that, you'll coupled with that, you'll see an equity market crisis like you've never seen before, even better, even bigger than 08, 09. Honestly, I, I think it's going to happen. I'm on record for saying that. So, Again, 50 to 60 percent correction over the span of the next three years, and I really do believe that that can happen. That's my view as well. So then he, uh, this person, she or he, introduces Ripple and and says that um, believes that Ripple XRP is the secret weapon, and uh, basically an economist, as I said years ago, 30 years ago, talked about get ready for a world currency. This was over 30 years ago. Uh, and essentially being uh, controlled by, say, someone like the International Monetary Fund or something like that. This article talks about the, the, the extremely wealthy being the Rockefellers and, and the Soroses, uh, who, who seem to be under the radar but getting into cryptocurrency ever so quietly, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, and we've seen that with BNY Mellon, 
BNY Mellon, one of the fellows that unfortunately um, died of uh, drug addiction. Uh, apparently, uh, the rumor says, well, it's not a rumor, I know, but um, you know, that he held $3 billion of, uh, of XRP. And when he died, which is very unfortunate from addiction, um, basically the private key was completely lost. But anyway, um, also the article talks about a new central bank uh, from the International Monetary Fund and where the International Monetary Fund would basically rule the global finances and essentially would do a better job than say the central banks have done, which have, the central banks and the governments have done a terrible time at, at, at this essentially. So there would be a loss of economic sovereignty and that would be basically uh, controlled by the International International Monetary Fund. Now, I think that's really interesting because if you look at the last YouTube I spoke about, the International Monetary Fund, uh, a lot of the member countries, the G20 countries, have to lend to the International Monetary Fund when they buy uh, special drawing rights, okay? They actually give them money, the International Monetary Fund, to buy special drawing rights. And um, some of those G20 countries, Turkey being uh, being in there in Argentina, you know, are going broke in themselves. So basically the big governments that are in there being the US, they control the agenda of the International Monetary Fund by buying most of the special drawing rights. Once the International Monetary Fund is funded by the US per se, where they buy the uh, special drawing rights, the International Monetary Fund then lends out to the poor developing countries, okay? Now, the thing is, there's a lot of multinational, multilateral agreements between poor countries and the International Monetary Fund. And if those agreements aren't signed because they're a barrier to entry, then those poor countries don't get that money. Now, if you have a, uh, a cryptocurrency, which is a sovereign international cryptocurrency, a world currency, then the barriers to entry are, are zero. In other words, uh, XRP can go anywhere in the world. Nothing needs to be signed. No multilateral government contracts, trade contracts, bank contracts, uh, tax contracts, whatever you want to call it, or compliance contracts, uh, XRP has no barriers to entry and that money can go anywhere that it needs to go uh, with no barriers to entry, which I think is really important. Um, the article also talks about the debt bubble, which is huge. Mm. Sorry, I just had some water. And the debt bubble is absolutely huge. And um, so not only do we have a debt bubble, we have a stock bubble. Okay, as you know, the US has something like 21 trillion in debt. Other countries, you know, have lots of debt as well. And it's an ever, it's a never ending uh, problem. And it's basically because of quantitative easing and the US dollar printing heaps of money, uh, printing more and more money as time goes on. Okay, now he talks about, or she talks about a, a G20 summit of 2009 where they were looking at basically preventing further contagion and supporting vulnerable emerging and developing markets, working together to address the flaws in the financial and supervisory architecture of the crisis the crisis has exposed. But the reality is nothing's been fixed and another crisis is pretty much looming. And this is pretty much what this article says, and I, I sort of agree with that. Um, also talked about Ripple and XRP being in the right places. Uh, the, you know, they effectively... That were sitting on the global board of SWIFT from 2010 to 2016. Uh, as you know, they were sitting with um, uh, the IM they've been sitting with the IMF and the US State Federal Reserve. And Joel Katz, as you know, as David Schwartz, uh, was effectively you know the architect of XRP, but used to work for the NSA, uh, and also has attended the Build Bilderberg meeting, uh, Bilderberg meeting which is one of the group's world elite meetings. And apparently it's very hard to get on, you know, to get an invite to that. And if you're getting the invite to that, you are something, you are someone that's absolutely the world's group elite. Uh, look it up. But, um, and so essentially uh, what, what the article is saying is Ripple is basically everywhere. It's where it needs to be. Uh, the, the big uh, important institutions know about Ripple and XRP and know about Ripple's capability. And uh, this gives justice to this article, I think, as well. Um, then it goes on to saying XRP will replace the US dollar. And I believe that too. 
the US dollar has been going down against the yen for, for from the start. Literally, it's been going down and down. Okay, it's just in one big downtrend now with a devaluation in a currency. We've seen it in Argentina. We've seen it in Zimbabwe. We've seen it in Turkey. No one can hold or buy the currency. They're not going to do it when the currency keeps going down. Why would you buy an asset that keeps going down? Okay, uh, it's not a great story. And the U.S. because of its debt problem keeps going down, uh, and that's not a great thing at all, right? It's devalued quite dramatically, and it will keep devaluing. Um, the article also talks about. XRP being a liquidity provider, and I'll show you how it can be for a liquidity provider. And it's all in the right places in Asia, particularly in, in Japan, where it's got a consortium of 80 banks. We know about that. It's everywhere in the world. Looking at India, it's pretty much global, okay? And um, basically, it's saying um, the IMF, the World Bank, and the central bank authorities, and the regulators throughout the world, um, all know about Ripple because Ripple is in all the right places, okay? So then we talk about a, a, a world reserve and it's talking about obviously gold to a, to a degree and, and some fiat to a degree being illiquid. And also if you have declining, declining fiat currency, the reality is no one's going to want to hold that declining fiat currency. So basically, the US dollar losing over 90% of its buying power since the 1920s. And then also talking about SWIFT being a prehistoric technology, which I agree with. It's a legacy system, very old. From 1973, SWIFT uses Ripple's drivers for real-time gross settlement, for real-time settlement. In other words, trying to settle within seconds because they use Ripple's drivers. SWIFT needs Ripple, not the other way around. And Ripple would not take over Swift. Why would they take over a company that has old legacy systems? The only reason why they would take it over is if they wanted the client base. That's the only thing that I could think about. But I could not see them doing it for old technology. Okay, no way. Now, uh, this article also talks about the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis made an impactful message on Twitter from their official account stating that the Triffin Dilemma refers to the double-edged sword of possessing a currency that serves as the world reserve currency. If a private cryptocurrency would replace a given world reserve currency, this would eliminate the dilemma for that currency. And that's correct. If you had a cryptocurrency being the world currency, you wouldn't need the other currency to be that standard. And as you, as you know, in the previous YouTube I did, that every world currency that's been a world currency doesn't last even from back 1400, you know, the, the world currency at that time was Portugal. Uh, then it went, you know, to France and and whatnot, okay? And then it went to the UK being on the gold standard and then it went to, to the US. So world currencies don't last over the, the time of history. So uh, the article goes on to say that Ripple from 2020 to 2025 will be the standard. And... Um, Ripple will basically be the world currency. It won't be Bitcoin because Bitcoin is decentralized in terms of the miners and because of how long it takes to val validate transactions and the costs and you never know whether the thing's going to settle. And I've also seen that in, said that in the previous YouTube. So then we get on to, and so with all that in, in the background, I want to talk to you guys about the multiplier effect. And it's an economic term and uh, I did an economics degree and I love economics. But it basically talks about money put into the system very simply, creates more spending, creates uh, the creates more of the consumer buying more goods, creates more jobs, creates more income, creates more tax taxes, and creates a multiplier effect. So it's an economic term that every time, very simply, there's an injection of new money put into the system it creates a multiplier effect. So 50 million goes in the system, consumers will consume with that 50 million, they'll spend more, that creates more jobs, there'll be more jobs available for consumers. People get more income, because they have more income, they consume more, 
And because they have more income, there are more tax taxes. And that creates a, a multiplier effect known in economics, okay? It could also be termed as the Keynesian effect by, by Keynes, okay? Um, but also the extra income leads to more spending and more income, okay? So the initial injection creates more economic growth. So in other words, one dollar of what's been put into the system, one dollar put into the system, the monetary system, creates more dollars in economic growth, okay? So the multiplier effect basically is one dollar put into the system, the financial system, the economic system, <coughs> excuse me, I've still got a bit of a sore throat, creates more than one dollar of economic growth, okay? That's what the multiplier effect is. Now, I want you to keep that in your mind and, and put it... Keep it in your mind uh, compared to what we've spoken about just in the previous slides, okay? So if we say, we say for example, Ripple put in a dollar of XRP into the money system, into the financial system, and consumers consumed 80 cents of that, the multiplier effect assumes that with 80 cent consumption, that that will generate $5 of growth within the system, okay? With $1 put in by XRP and consumers consume at least 80% of that $1, it will add $5 of growth within the economic system, okay? And there is basically an economic formula for that. So in short, a dollar that goes in the system will generate more dollars in terms of economic growth. And that's pretty much the formula. Okay, a dollar, one dollar minus 0.8 consumption, one over 0.2 generates five dollars. So for every dollar of new income generates five dollars of extra income in economic growth, yeah? Right, so let's go to the next thing. So where does Ripple and XRP come into this then? Now think about it. XRP and Ripple, the system, create a highly liquid currency at speed with minimal cost. So you could do 50 million, it's going to cost you less than 30 cents. Very relatively stable to fiat if we look at, you know, where fiat's going and depending on which fiat we're talking about. It is a borderless uh, currency in itself, it's borderless. You don't have to do all the IMF documentation or anything else. It's very, very stable, can be transacted anywhere. <coughs> it doesn't have to worry about borders. Can generate economic growth for everyone, everyone. Any poor country, even if they can't do all that massive paperwork, they could generate economic growth for everyone, not just for the richer countries that can do all the documents and whatever. So if you think about it, Ripple could release 50 million XRP from their escrow. Just stay with me on this thought. 50 million from their escrow and put it into the financial system or the money system or the economic system like a government injection, okay? 50 million worth of XRP is released into the system, okay? The multiplier effect, and if we assume that 80% of that 50 million of XRP is consumed, which means if the consumer is consuming, right, they're buying goods from the shelves because they're eating or whatever it might be, those goods create a demand. That demand goes back to the manufacturer. They have to increase their manufacturing. They don't have enough staff. They've got to employ more staff. Those staff get paid more money. There's more money spending now because they had to employ new people. They're buying more in the system as well. And then obviously it creates more demand, more, more money, taxes go up and all this sort of business, right? But you know what I'm saying, right, within the economic system. So the multiplier effect basically says of consumption of 80% and 20% being saved, which is conservative, uh, a dollar of injection creates $5 in economic growth. So if we go, right, XRP uses their 50 million in XGO and they go, right, 50 million, whoops, what's that? Sorry, I've got a problem with my computer. Whoops, sorry. 
How do I stop that? Oops, let me just fix it up. So just going back to this, 50 million XRP by 36 cents or whatever it's worth today, right, gives you 18 million injection into the economic system, okay? So Ripple inject US dollars 18 million into the system. Now, as we said, $1 creates an extra $5 economic growth. Then suddenly there's 90 million injected from the multiplier effect. 18 million, but with the economic growth, you know, 18 million consumers consume 80% of that. You know, they're buying and spending more because of that. They're eating more uh, demand, manufacturing demand. They put on more labor, eating more, you know, more taxes, income rises. Then that creates an economic effect of 90 million, okay? So what it means is poor countries can basically be helped by XRP liquidity, it can be transferred anywhere, no borders, at minimal cost, speed, minimal cost within three seconds, and it can increase growth by five-fold, okay? With no IMF paperwork and XRP is borderless, okay? So the result we have is money goes and growth goes where it needs to go directly with limited corruption it can go to africa everywhere remote areas can change the world and basically xrp can be the world cryptocurrency or the world currency and basically with xrp and the world it could literally create the multiplier effect in all of those poor countries and change the economic growth of those countries which creates jobs creates income and gets people out of poverty abject poverty and tying it back to this article this is exactly what this article is talking about guys so anyway, just look, it's very much food for thought, but I do believe in it. I honestly believe it, hand on heart. So please look after yourselves, guys. Um, be kind to yourself, be kind to your family and friends. Be kind to animals, putty cats. And I love and miss my putty cats. Had to put my Ezzy down this year as well. They're both 17 and a half, 18, and gosh, I miss them. But just be kind to people in the world because you know what? We never know when we're going to last. You know, we can die in any second. So and I hope you get food for thought for this. Um, you know, come back if you've got any questions. And thank you very much for listening. Cheers.